We're tracking the latest developments out of Ukraine. Overnight, explosions were heard throughout the capital of Kyiv and other Ukrainian cities and regions. As authorities said, there was a countrywide air attack. This as fierce fighting has continued around that embattled eastern city of Bakhmut that we have been telling you about for several months now. Ukraine has been gaining some ground there in recent days, and CNN has obtained new satellite imagery that shows just the devastating toll that fighting has taken on the city over the last year alone. This all is happening as Ukraine is preparing for that long-awaited counteroffensive to reclaim occupied land that Russia took when it invaded Ukraine. With us now to talk more about this is retired U.S. Army Major Mike Lyons. Thank you, of course, for being here. So we're talking about Bakhmut, which is this key city that they have been fighting over. We talked about it last week with the Russian mercenaries and whether or not they were going to withdraw. This image right here is so striking to me. This is Bakhmut a year ago, and it just looks completely torched. What happened exactly? What weapons were used to take it from this to this? Yeah, Kayla, an example of, you know, Russian war crime. This is a thermobaric weapon fired, firebombing fundamentally, weapons that are designed to do nothing but cause fire and destruction here against civilian targets. This was a civilian apartment building, an apartment complex here. You could see the entire vegetation is gone on both sides, on, on this side here. Uh, the buildings are destroyed. This is just one example of many other examples of the Russians using weapons against civilians that they shouldn't be doing. So that's something that they would never typically use in an area where you can see homes, you can see parks. Right. And, and we saw in apartment buildings and other places where there's other examples of the thermobaric weapons. There's a certain kind of system that they brought to the battlefield. It's not even controlled by the Russian army. Strategically, it was brought in by the senior leaders of the Russian military in order to, to create a weapon of terror for the civilians in that area. Just uh, all of this is what makes people wonder about the Ukrainian counteroffensive that we've been talking about, which was expected to happen, I believe, in the spring. Uh, there's now big questions about what exactly that's going to look like. I mean, obviously, now we're here through mid-May. Mm -hmm. What's your sense? So I, I think there's a pause taking place, rightfully so, as the Ukraine military is training its troops overseas, places like Grafenbeer, places like the United States, has to put its weapons in place. In order for the counteroffensive to be effective, the commander has the option of both where it takes place and when it takes place. So if you look at this very long border here between mm -hmm. where Russian troops are and where the Ukrainian troops are, I think the, the counteroffensive, when it finally happens kind of cuts in this way and threatens Crimea until the Ukraine military can threaten what Russia is doing in the south here um, the Russian military is not going to stop so I, I so believe, you think it's more towards the south than the east I do and I think there's a little bit of a faint taking place right now and disinformation for what's going on the the, the battle of Bakhmut is a, is a classic example of Ukraine resilience and Russian military failure and is feeding into that narrative but it also will show that if the, if the Russians put too much effort towards that the Ukrainians will turn around and, and kind of cut their forces kind of in half here and really threaten Crimea. And as you know, President Biden is in Japan right now. He's meeting with G7 leaders. Obviously, Ukraine is going to be one of the top topics they're talking about. The White House is coming under pressure once again for the F-16 fighter jets that are made by Lockheed Martin to provide them to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. What's your sense of whether or not they're going to give on that? I don't think they're going to give. It's still a long time frame, 18 months, in order to get them to the battlefield for them to be effective, to train pilots, and also for the logistics supply chain. They need helicopters. They need ways to move troops around the battlefield quickly. I think besides the artillery, the air defense, and the armor systems that have been given to them, you bring helicopters to that counteroffensive right now would allow shock effect. It'll allow troops to move around the battlefield, cross over the Dnepro River, cross those obstacles that we have there. I think that this uh, uh, conversation gets tabled again. So those are the arguments against sending them, the time it would take to train and to get them there and, you know, how long it would take before they could actually use them. What's the argument for sending the F-16s? Well, it sends a signal to the Russians that uh, the European community, we've seen the Brits and the, and the Dutch have already said that they're, they're willing to, and the Belgians have said that they would like to train the pilots and do things with them. So it's a more of a strategic weapon. The bottom line is this is leading more and more to Ukraine likely becoming a member of NATO at some point, three, four, five years down the line when this is all over. All right, Major Mike Lyons, thank you for that update. It's good to see that and to see just that striking image once again of Bakhmut before and after and seeing what Russia has done. Thank you. Thanks. Ukraine says Russia launched several waves of missile attacks overnight from air, land and sea. But the country's air force says 29 of the 30 missiles were intercepted. At least one person was killed in a missile strike in the southern port city of Odessa. 
On the front lines in the east, fierce fighting is being reported in Bakhmut, where the head of the Wagner mercenary group claims his fighters have edged forward inside the battered city. CNN's Claire Sebastian is following these developments. So, Claire, quite a lot of activity mm. there, aerial attacks that you were telling me about mm. across the country, as well as potential news from Bakhmut, but it's very difficult to know the veracity of these. Yeah, so we've seen what the Ukrainians are now saying is the ninth overnight aerial assault from Russia in the month of May. So clearly there's an uptick there. This, while it was less concentrated than what we saw on Monday night into Tuesday with that huge uh, attack, this was sort of waves of attacks happening over the course of about seven hours, they say, according to the Air Force, coming though from different directions. So this backs up the assertion that we had from a US official earlier this week that this is not just about exhausting Ukraine's air defenses uh, on Russia's part, but also trying to confuse them, bringing in missiles from all different directions. We understand that in the Kyiv region, that no missiles got through. They do report fragments and debris. And, and that, of course, has its danger in itself. In Odessa, the, uh, the regional command there is now clarifying that it was actually debris that hit this industrial facility and killed one person. So that is sobering. Even when air defenses are activated, there is still significant danger. They also say they shot down a couple of drones. Over in Bakhmut, you know, different weapons. This is land-based fighting, but similar sort of attritional strategy that we're seeing from Russia. They continue, according to the Ukrainians, to bring in new units into Bakhmut. Prigozhin, the head of Wagner, now claiming uh, that they took some 260 meters of territory uh, in the last day, presumably within the city. Ukrainians say they're advancing from the outskirts. And we've got some images that I want to show you, some new satellite images that show really the cost uh, of this ongoing battle. This is a school, school number 12. This is in the Western districts uh, of Bakhmut. You can see on the left in May last year and on the right uh, this month, pretty much wiped off the map. I mean, it looks like ruins. Um, so that is, that's really what's going on there. These are heavily contested areas. This is the theater just to the west of the Bakhmutka River. We believe that's an area that was taken over by uh, Russian forces earlier on, possibly sort of end of March, beginning of April. That theater also destroyed their shops to the right of it. Uh, there you see also destroyed. So that gives you a sense uh, of the kind of fighting, buildings collapsing, destruction uh, in Bakhmut. And no one is giving up. Russia, as I say, continues to bring in new units. Claire Sebastian, thank you so much.